Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video, we're going to extend the concept that I started with my previous video about how to use paradiddles to improve your ghost note playing. In this video, we're going to be playing paradiddle between the bass drum and the snare drum, and that will give us some good bass drum workout stuff that will improve your coordination. It'll help you start developing some faster 16th notes on the bass and just generally allow you to um, coordinate better between your hands and feet, especially in the context of having those same ghost notes that I showed you in the previous video. So let's see what I'm talking about and then we'll see if I can explain it successfully. <laughs> Two. Flaming there at the end. That's the idea though. The first thing you need to be able to do to get this all working is to be able to play the paradiddle fluently, the regular single paradiddle, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, and again if you're playing the other way around, left-handed, just flip the sticking. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, with the standard accents. You want to be sure that your hands are reasonably confident with the motions you need to play the balance of softer and louder notes there on the snare drum. Now, I'm going to substitute the right hand bit with the bass drum, and I'm not going to be doing the same dynamic thing. I'm just going to play bass drum notes at a sort of punchy, rocky sort of level of dynamic. There won't be any accent there, but the, the left hand on the snare is going to keep the same accent pattern that I, I would be playing when I'm playing the paradiddle as a normal snare drum thing, okay? So we have... and so on and so on and so on. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add the hi-hat and I'm going to play hi-hat as eighth notes. So we're thinking about the paradiddle pattern of sixteenths, one E Anna, two E Anna, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And the hi-hat's going to be going one and two and. Now, if you play this pattern between the foot and the snare, the bass drum and the snare, maybe you can just throw the eighth notes in there and you're good to go. But I'm going to assume that if you haven't done this before, that's probably not going to happen that easily. So let's look at a way we can sort of break this all down and then put it back together that will allow you to work out all the little uh, sort of movements and interactions between the hands and feet here. So uh, let's just start off thinking one eighth note at a time, or two sixteenths, right? So that means our, our first two sixteenths is one E, and that would be the right left bit. And the left hand stroke on the snare at this point is a ghost note. So we've got right left, one E. The hi-hat, we have that one eighth note on the one, so it would be like this. One E. Next, we have the Anna, which will be two, not two snare drums, what am I talking about? Two bass drum notes, okay? So we're gonna have Anna with the hi-hat playing on the and. Okay, so we have one E, we have Anna, one E Anna, let's put that together, ha, ah. we're doing it slowly enough to be able to articulate everything nicely, to let our brain focus on all the different elements, and we're going to do it and then just pause there and then repeat that. And we're going to look for that moment where the body and the mind kind of settle in to a feeling of accepting all these movements. So if you're new to this, at first, when you're trying a new coordination thing, oh, the body kind of reacts in this way. You're having to concentrate and it's tricky. Um, and you want to kind of repeat something like this until 
ah, you just feel that little softening and relaxation and, and kind of acceptance of this new series of movements you're doing. So, one e ana. Okay, good. I'm happy. Next, we're going to go two e ana, which is the other half of the the paradiddle. Now, I'm going to be playing the snare on the two, which is the accented backbeat, and the E is going to be the bass drum. So we're going to have and then the hi-hat eighth as well, of course, on the two. So we've got two E. And then finally the Anna, which is going to be two ghost notes on the snare and the hi-hat playing on the and. Feeling good, let's put that together. That little pause is important. So now I've, I've had a go at coordinating all the different bits. Let's see if I can put the one iana and the two iana together in sequence, but I'm going to allow myself to pause so that I'm going to play one iana, two iana. It might make it a little bit easier to play those sequence of things. So let's see. Did I say that's called chunking? We're taking little bits, working on them separately, and then putting them together. Once my body feels good with that, once I'm starting to feel a bit more comfortable with the coordination, I can eliminate that pause between the one iana and the two iana. And so I'm gonna play that whole sequence and then pause like this. And the same thing. Am I feeling comfortable with this now? Is my brain starting to accept this sequence of events? Are my limbs starting to feel relaxed while I'm playing these different movements? Then let's get the whole thing going without any pauses. Now we're just going to play continuously. Once you've got that all working for you, sit with that for as long as you like. Learn how to move your attention between the different limbs, and this applies to anything you're working on, but you know, you can really focus on the bass drum that you're playing, nice even strokes that have a bit of a punch to them. Really focus on the snare separately. Once you've listened to the bass, move your attention to the snare, listen to the balance between the ghost notes and the backbeat, the loud accented note. Listen to the hi-hat. In this case, I always like starting this way anyway, but you've got the tip of the stick on top of the cymbals just for a nice, tight, crisp sound. But you could be using any sound. You could be digging in to the edge of the cymbals or playing a bit sloshy. Once you get the hang of this, you can then... Uh, the unlimited options of what you could do with the hi-hat side. You can, you can play it on the ride as well. You can do accents and different broken 16th and 8th patterns. Um, there's loads you could do with this paradiddle. So, Sit with it, play it until it feels really, really comfortable. Once you know that you can play that continuously at a slow, steady tempo, and that you're listening to all the components and they're sounding good, the next thing to do is just speed it up a little bit, just to see how that feels. And remember, none of this is a competition, so don't rush too much to speed up, but you might wanna go a little bit beyond the tempo that you were first working on. So.
Now, how are we going to get used to using this in real life? I don't think there's that many scenarios where you're going to be playing the paradiddle like this uh, constantly, even if you, if you work on the different permutations, which I'll come to in the next video. But once you've got the hang of this, you may want to sort of look at ways that we could use this in a, in a setting that you'd use musically. So for example, you could play, uh, say, a bar of groove and then play a bar with the parallel things. So you could play a regular eighth note beat or whatever you're comfortable with, the boogaloo type of thing, whatever you fancy, and then do the, the paradiddle uh, in the second bar. So you're going to play a two bar phrase, something like this. Once that's working for you, you could turn that into a four bar phrase, play three bars of whatever groove you fancy, and then the paradiddle to kind of top it off. And it's almost like something between a groove and a fill. Mm. Two, three. <laughs> And then I kind of threw in the next step there by accident. But the next thing is to play a groove and try and just improvise bringing the paradiddle element in and out. So you're not thinking necessarily of uh, playing the paradiddle at any particular point, but just see what happens improvisationally. Huh. Two, three. <laughs> Something like that. Ugh. The whole thing with an improvisation is you never know what's going to happen. But work on that until you can sort of drop in, you know, the whole paradiddle one iana, two iana, or three iana, four iana, or just even just components of it, the right, left, right, right bit, or the left, right, left, left bit. Um, you want to develop as much freedom as you can. And then finally, start adding fills to that. So, you know, within the context of a four bar phrase, we'll do some improvising of groove, putting the paradiddle in there, throwing a fill in for good measure, crashing, and so on and so forth, and then you've got that sort of musical context as well. Uh, two. <laughs> And there you go. That's a really nice workout for the right foot. Or the left foot, if you're that way inclined, yes. I'm not excluding you, don't worry. You just have to reverse it in your head. I'm sorry, I am right, rightwardly biased. But there you go, that's the paradiddle. Now, um, we, we'll have a load of permutations of that, right? There's, there's three paradiddle permutations. There's a bunch of different options you can pursue. And I'm going to co cover that in uh, another video. Uh, but but that, that's the essence of that. And um, I, as I'm aiming this at people who haven't really done this sort of thing before, the idea is to keep it slow and steady. We're not looking to do anything fast and flashy with this idea at this point. Uh, and, and, you know, go, go away and, and have a go and, and see what happens with it. And please let me know whether you found this useful, if it's fun, if it's frustrating. Did I explain it nice and clearly? Uh, and, and, you know, are the concepts sort of coming together well enough? Did you watch this and then fall asleep? I wish I'd uh, not ramble quite so much. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to, to hearing what you think. 
Uh, meanwhile, I'm also a drum teacher, and I'm doing these videos to make myself uh, available to people. So if you think I could help you, if you, you like this style of presentation, if you like the way I break things down and explain them, um, feel free to check out my contact details in the description box and uh, get in touch with me and see if I can help you. I'm available on Skype and Zoom and all that good stuff. And uh, I'm even a real life human being in Northwest London. So that's uh, also a possibility. Uh, I've made myself a Buy Me A Coffee account. So if you just like to donate some money to me, ha ha ha, um, you know, to, 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 to help sustain this channel, I suppose is what they say, um, feel free. Again, the details are in the description box below. Now, am I done? I think so. It's time for you to get off and practice.